Welcome to this web lecture on the multi-commodity network flow problem. In a previous web lecture, we looked into the network flow problem, and now we're additionally going to introduce multiple commodities, and I'm going to show you what that means. So similar to the previous web lecture, we're also going to use the example of TUE Airlines. TUE Airlines operates a network of direct flights in Europe and allows passengers to change over between these flights. Now they have a problem because two of their flights have been cancelled which means that some passengers that wanted to go from Rome to Amsterdam are now stranded in Rome, while some other passengers that wanted to go from Brussels to Vienna are now stranded in Brussels. These passengers must be assigned to different flights in order to finally reach their destination. And one of the questions that you can ask is how can you assign all passengers from those cancelled flights to other flights such that you minimize costs? So what we would like to have is that these passengers from Brussels, for example, travel to Toulouse, then to Zurich, and then finally to their destination, Vienna, while the passengers from Rome, for example, travel to Zurich, then to Brussels, and then to Amsterdam, and like this also reach their final destination. The problem, if we just use the network flow problem as is, is that the people from Brussels will go to Amsterdam, while the people from Rome will go to Vienna, which is not going to make any one of them happy. So what do we do instead? So let's look into the mathematical model here. So this is the basic mathematical model, the first three steps of our recipe, so sets, parameters and decision variables. And obviously we will have to make some changes here. So since we want to look into a multi-commodity formulation, we have to add commodities. So in commodities is always a set. So we're going to set, add a set for the passenger types, i.e. our commodities, and we're going to call this set K. Then we have to check which of our parameters and decision variables actually depend on this commodity, so on the passenger type. And if we look into the parameters, the R capacity does not depend on whether these passengers are currently transferring from A to B or from B to C, but the supply and the demand actually depend on that. So the supply is num now the number of people in Rome, for example, that want to go from Rome to Amsterdam, because our passenger type is, I want to go from Rome to Amsterdam. And then in Rome, our supply for this particular passenger type is then actually the number of people that want to travel. But for example, in Brussels, that's for a different passenger type. So here we have to differentiate. The costs don't actually differ, but what is going to differ is the decision variable. So our decision variable now, of course, have to, has to be the number of people that travel on a given flight. So for example, from Toulouse to Zurich of a certain passenger type. So because we obviously want to know if these people are currently traveling from Brussels to Vienna or from Rome to Amsterdam. Now what we're going to do is now we're going to look into correcting mathematical models. So what you're given here is a mathematical model, but if you would run this mathematical model, it would not do so for a variety of reasons. So there is multiple constraints, multiple formulations that are wrong in this mathematical model. So first we're going to look into this first constraint. If you look here on the left, what we're doing is we're practically subtracting something from the same. So whatever, whatever our x variables are going to be, this part is going to be zero. And what we're now saying is that our, our supply, which is a parameter, is equal to zero. So this will inevitably result in this mathematical model not working. Also, if we just briefly think about it, what we would like to model, what we would like to model is that the difference between incoming and outgoing flow is the supply. So what we have to do is we have to change here this set actually in line with these two. Then the next mistake that we're going to see is if we just read a little bit further, what we're going to end up with here is that I is an OK. I don't actually know what OK is because I don't know what K is. 
Are we currently talking about the passengers from Brussels to Vienna or about the passengers from Rome to Amsterdam? We later on here actually define it, but at this point in time, I'm already, I already stumbled across it. So what we have to do is we have to switch this. We first have to define K and then we can use OK. So we're changing this actually everywhere because everywhere it could poss possibly be relevant. Now we're continuing looking and the next thing that we're seeing is this constraint. And now let's briefly think about our K is now the passengers that travel from Rome to Amsterdam. And we are actually looking at this constraint for I being Rome. Then what we're saying is that the number of people that go into Rome of this particular passenger type equals the number of people that leave Rome. But we actually up here already specified that this should be the number of people that are interested in traveling from Rome to Amsterdam. So these two constraints clearly contradict each other. Also, it doesn't make sense to define this constraint for uh, Rome because Rome is not an intermediary node. Rome is a terminal node of this, uh, uh, of this flow. So what we have to do is we have to remove for example, Rome, so for example, the origin locations, and simultaneously, we obviously also have to remove the destination locations. So we're doing this here. Now we look into the next constraint, and if we look into this constraint here, then what we're seeing is that the number of people of a given passenger type that travel on a given arc has to be less, to its le less than or equal to its capacity. If we just, uh, Straightforwardly, that makes sense. But now the problem is that if we were to implement this, it would be possible that, for example, from Toulouse to Zurich, uh, if we have a capacity of UIJ, that we could use this capacity UIJ once for the people that travel from uh, Rome to Amsterdam and once for the people that travel from Brussels to Vienna. And then actually, we would be out of seats on this aircraft. So what we have to do is that both passenger types together don't exceed this capacity. So what we have to do is we have to remove the K and K and the for all part, but we have to add a summation here on the left. And then the last mistake in this mathematical model is actually this. I have no idea what is standing in this for all part. I've never heard of the set I, but if I'm looking at this constraint, my assumption would be is that we're talking about the set of locations. If we're talking about the set of locations, then we remember from the previous slide that this is V. And so we have to exchange that for V. So what I would like you to take away from this short web lecture on, net, on multi-commodity network flow problems is first of all, what multi-commodity formulations are, and secondly, how to correct math models. Thanks.